Rob. Uh, okay, uh, uh, I have the pleasure now to facilitate a, uh, a discussion on this, and I'm going to ask uh, all the regional presenters to come and join us up on the stage. So Grace, Gladman, Tata, Johan, Alberto, Anne and Charles. Anyone else who wants to join us? Anyone else who assisted is more than welcome, Jason. <coughs> uh, to organize this, I already have a qu request from youth uh, to make a statement and have a question. So I'd ask the youth to go to the microphone, where I ca uh, which is just here. Uh, those youth who approached me earlier to see if they could say something. Can you identify yourself? Oh, okay, they're coming. Uh, how we're going to arrange this, you're welcome to make a short statement, but please make it short because we want as many voices as possible, not just one voice. Uh, and also, if you'd like to speak, uh, line up behind the microphone so we get people in the right order. If you're asking a question uh, or asking something about a particular region, please identify yourself when you start, but please let us know who you would like to answer you. That will help us uh, move along fast and make the most of the short period we have for a discussion. Uh, so on that, it gives me great pleasure to uh, allow our youth to speak. So thank you. Well, uh, firstly, um, I'd just like to pay my respects and acknowledgements to Larrakia people. Um, so we as uh, young delegates are from all, all over the world, different parts. Uh, we are concerned, engaged in land and sea management or conservation or via biocultural uh, diversity, uh, participating in the first uh, wind conference here in Darwin. Uh, we collectively uh, envisage the Valley of Wind, the World Indigenous Network, as an empowering and collective forum and a platform for networking and forging solidarities and uh, among young people, elders as well, uh, just to exchange experiences, our uh, knowledge, our stories, and our collective concerns as well as meaningful space for capacity building and to encourage and support future actions. Now we uh, strongly believe having young land and sea managers uh, embedded and integrated to will uh, complement and add value to aims and visions of WIN. We propose Young People's Network to facilitate uh, representations, uh, voices, and effective participation of young people uh, within the structure and future processes of the World Indigenous Network. Uh, we acknowledge support of WIN uh, for providing space and support for this event for young people to engage in the first WIN conference uh, we voice continued support and encouragement uh, for strength of networking and vibrant participation of young people in future win. Uh, we believe actions and participation of young people during this win shall leave a, last, a lasting legacy for future, uh, future win. Yeah. Um, So some of the stuff that we uh, come up with in our discussions uh, back, on, back on Monday. Uh, we went through everything, sorted, sorted through, and uh, just summarizing some of the main points that were discussed, uh, we found a theme of uh, communication and networking was uh, really important. We also got another theme of capacity building, uh, education, and a connection to nature and culture. I guess um, as in future when um, building a network, just not in Australia, but all over the world, and how we can, um, these are the sort of the issues that are all shared, or we're all experiencing, and I guess where we can improve on building a network amongst us young people, um, or getting the young people a voice, and that way um, future events like the uh, world World Park Congress in Sydney. Uh, this might also give us another platform where our young people that are involved in uh, land and sea management, whether it's our research, monitoring, 
and any other activities, connection to land. Uh, this will give um, indigenous people a voice uh, to um, voice their opinion and uh, their experience as well in the world past Congress. But we just don't want to leave this network just with indigenous or just with the win. Uh, I guess what we're saying for the youth and the young network is where all us young indigenous can come together and voice and also connect up with other networks all over the world. And that way um, there's a transition between young and as we get up to those other positions, there's a smooth transition. I guess that's where something that we want to do. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I want to say that Gavin Singleton and some of these other young people came to the governing body of the Convention on Biodiversity last year in Hyderabad in India. They spoke to 14,000 people. They spoke to every government on earth. And uh, to see somebody from back home in Queensland, I was deeply moved to hear the voice of our youth at an international meeting. It moved my new, new boss to search for funding so that we can have a strong youth movement inside the Convention on Biodiversity so their voices are heard at every meeting that we have from now on. And uh, I, I was deeply moved when I met them and saw them and saw their good work in India. So thank you so much, uh, guys, for that. Uh, do we have some... Do we have some more people who'd like to make uh, some comments or ask some questions from the people we have up on the stage? We have a few minutes and... Don't be shy. <laughs> well, you, you have to come down to the microphone. <laughs> of course. If anyone else wants to say something, please, please line up so we know what order to go in, because I'm half blind and I won't be able to tell otherwise. Thank you. Um, I suppose what I would like to do is, um, inspired by the young people that are up here, is to maybe um, look at some type of resolution for the formation of a youth indigenous network, or you know, national network, so that they also can meet like this separately and raise their issues, not just bring a few youth together that come along with us and sit in a back room and discuss their issues, is that they have the opportunity on the world stage to participate in a network such as this. And I think that it's important for us to, to um, support that as well. So I'd like to put a resolution that we look at establishing a World Indigenous Youth Network more importantly, I think it's about intergenerational support. I think youth can only learn from elders, and if elders are shorter here, which there are, and we couldn't afford to bring elders along, mm. but elders have to be included in that process as well. There is an, you know, an initiation process in regards to how issues are brought forward, and that has to be really focused. Mm. But one of the reasons we initially came, well, I initially came, was to look at what discussions are happening around climate change and if discussions are all happening um, on climate change with other Indigenous populations. Mm. It's very hard to, um, I suppose, connect with your own mob um, in relation to climate change because there's no funding for climate change and you have to go out and do the work yourself. You know, so our, <coughs> our Indigenous nations mm. throughout the world working with climate change and I'd just love to connect with you um, mm. in, into that realm because very little work is being done. Mm. If climate change, well, we know climate change is here and it's going to be an effect, then how are we going to deal with that? How is our culture to move along with that? And no one is considering that from, from a government perspective, which is really pushing us back to the, to, to the background. And we have to deal with climate change if we want us, ourselves to survive. And I'd love to listen to anyone on the stage who is talking about climate change. Thank you. Uh, maybe, maybe I can give a quick answer on that. Uh, of course, I'm from the Convention on Biodiversity, but there's three environmental conventions that came out of the Earth Summit in 92. And the other one, the other sister convention is desertification, uh, which is a very big deal in Australia and Africa. And of course, the UN Framework Climate Change Convention. 
and uh, there is an indigenous caucus that follows that body. Uh, it hasn't been, uh, I, I probably should, should be talking out of turn, but it hasn't been as open to indigenous voices as the Convention on Biodiversity and some other UN processes, but indigenous peoples are fighting to push the door open and be heard. Uh, they've agreed to discuss local level ad adaptation, but they've been rather slow in taking up the issue of climate change mitigation, such as mono plantations, where that may impact on indigenous people's human rights. Uh, but I can put you in contact with the indigenous caucus, and uh, they also raise money to get themselves to the climate change meetings. So thank you for that question. Uh, does anyone want to say anything else about climate change? Any other questions? I see we have some more people waiting, so we'll keep moving. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. Maukri. My language, Maukri means countryman, kinsman. I am a traditional owner from the Western Cape, York, mining town called Weeper, but I'm from Nupranam, a Tanikrip elder. I'm very, very proud to be here. First of all, I'd like to acknowledge the Larakia people of land which we're standing on right here. For our young ones, there are future intergenerational equity. <coughs> Dr. I, um, there's another one. I'm just quickly going to run, run through quick notes that I've written down, then get follow through another one. The first one was, I'm a bit short here, excuse me. Corporate social responsibility strategies, envisioning alternatives, biophysical limits on nature, and of course, doctor, as you said, can maybe some institutional support. Uh, and of course, traditional owners, and our youth declaration. Thank you. I think a very interesting point uh, as we pursue funding to make this network enduring, and maybe we'll consider the private sector, so th the issue of corporate responsibility uh, has to be foremost in our minds if we're going to think about the private sector and uh, getting any funding in that direction. So thank you very much for that, my brother. Please go ahead. <clears throat> yeah, my name is Lyndon Brownlee, and I'm from Kalgoorlie. I'm a Wangatha and from the Western Desert. And I just want to say thank you to the Larrakia people for allowing myself to be here to represent my people and uh, also for inviting the rest of the delegates to be here from around the world. I just want to say that I've really enjoyed the conference and I have... I believe that there's been quite a significant amount of work that has been put into setting up the conference and the organizing, and all I can do is uh, congratulate you all on, uh, on a good job. There are, there are going to be things that uh, we pick up, and there's no, uh, no, no, uh, no, no, uh, no offense in, in uh, in us making our observations. But as a, as a young person, I don't know if I'm classified as youth, uh, considering my age, and I don't know, I think I'm somewhere in between there. But one thing that I'd like to see, and I think my brother may have, may have uh, touched on it a bit, I don't know if he did or he did not, but I'd like to see a commitment to our youth in the vision of WIN. I think that this is something that is very important uh, for, for us, not only as Aboriginal people here in Australia, but as indigenous people right around the world. We need to see a greater commitment to our youth. And I'm sure that the problems and the issues that young people are facing, young indigenous youth around the world and here, the Aboriginal youth in Australia, they can, these, these, these issues, these problems that they are facing, they can 
be sorted out. They can, they, they, there is a solution to it, and that is going back to our culture, sending our young people back to the culture and teaching them about these things, instilling these values in our culture within our young people. And this is only going to happen when we see a commitment to our youth, I believe, in the vision. Vision is important, and I mentioned this a while back, a couple of, uh, maybe a few hours ago, to, to a couple of people here today, and I'm not a preacher, I'm not a pastor, but I'm a Christian, and I believe that is very true. In Proverbs 29, 18, it says, where there is no vision, the people perish. And that is exa exactly what's going to happen to our young people, not only here in Australia, but right across the world, indigenous young people around the world, that is what's going to happen if we are not a part of the greater vision. And if we do not instill that within our young people, then we can expect them to have a hopeless end. If we want to see change happening with our youth, we need to take them back to the culture. We need to take them back to the old ways. And I believe that we can do this through making a commitment to our youth in the vision of win. And a commitment within ourselves, within yourselves as mothers and fathers and uncles and aunties and grandparents, a commitment within yourself that you are going to secure the vision and the future of our young people. I'm sick of the words agreement and, 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 and contracts, but the word that I like to use is a covenant. We must make a covenant with each other that we are going to nurture and we are going to look after and create a vision, instill a vision within our young people that is going to save them and our culture and our communities and our people in general. Thank you. I think it's been good to have some voices uh, of youth and know there's support for youth. Uh, also, the role of our elders and intergenerational transfer has also been emphasized. Uh, before I hand to you, I'd also like to welcome any elders in the room as we come to the end of our discussions. Uh, please let us know if you'd like to uh, say a few words before we finish. And uh, while you're thinking about that, I'll hand to our next speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, firstly, recognition to the Larrakia people again. Um, they've um, allowed us to stand here and talk over the last three days. Um, my comment is, I suppose, to all of you guys up on stage there is I wanted to make this in our own delegation here in um, Australia. When I was looking through the vision and the aims of the WIN network, um, what I seen was it was a great opportunity for information sharing and opening up of communication channels between Indigenous people all around the world. What I didn't see was the next step in the, in the vision is, um, is this going to be a platform for raising issues and divine, defining recommendations at the na international and national level? And does that need to be stated within those frameworks and the vision itself? Um, look, there is no doubt that for all Indigenous people around the world, there are issues. So I think if we look at what we're dealing with here in terms of the purpose of this gathering, in terms of what we can take away here, there's a couple of key issues that we were dealing with. One was about getting a interaction from the grassroots on all of our uh, cultural land management, sea management, and all of, the, all of those important things. This was the opportunity. I acknowledge the fact that this is only a starting point, and it isn't a panacea. The WIN conference isn't a panacea for all of the other issues that we have to deal with. I think that one of the things we tried to get out of the sessions when we had our e own regional country discussions was about recognizing there was this good opportunity for knowledge and cultural exchange. And then how do we then move forward if we recognize there is value in interacting with all of our international brothers and sisters, all of our inter-regional brothers and sisters around the common interests that we have 
on the basis of us looking after our country. So look, we, we could probably uh, go through and talk about the number of issues that each of us face. The common link around us as indigenous peoples around the world, there is a common thread in terms of our socio-economic circumstances. And so I kind of think, yes, we can preach to the converted uh, around our issues, but we've got a limited time here. We want to take the opportunity, if we recognize that there is value in interacting with each other uh, for the shared knowledge stuff, and how do we, moving forward, create the necessary structure to do that? What are the more pragmatic issues that we have to face around resourcing and support if we want to continue to do this? People have expressed concern that they are wanting to ensure that it is a grassroots-driven process, and that's great. Um, we do require a secretariat support, somebody to push and drive things, otherwise we'll have a million things to deal with and nobody to do it. So structurally, I think what we require is some steps in terms of what do we do to take advantage of our interaction if we want to do this in the future and those other issues. Um, I spoke a little bit earlier about um, my uh, views around, and not that I'm speaking for the government, but I, I could pretty much guess that the Australian government does not intend to host future events. Uh, there are different considerations. I believe that all of those countries around the world, if you can link this to uh, the important issues for indigenous peoples and all those other issues, then there ought to be a wider focus around getting support for this network, for this interaction of indigenous peoples and their uh, values and their views. So the question is, we have a ticking clock. We'll all be out of here. <laughs> when? And so we can't uh, deal with every single issue that we have in the limited time that we have. So what I would like to suggest is that uh, what is the future things that need to occur? And I, I hope our uh, guests and uh, other people around the place uh, agree that uh, what is the actionable, what is the things that we need to do from here on in? Thank you. Uh, Nolan, I, I want to thank you to, to, uh, in reminding us that this network has a focus, and that is supporting people who are working on country. Uh, for people from other countries, when we say that, we mean working on our traditional lands and waters. Uh, there is a broad uh, uh, body that deals with many issues called the UN uh, Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues, which is actually finishing its meeting this Friday after a two-week meeting in New York. Uh, there is a strong delegation of Indigenous and local community uh, representatives there, including Indigenous peoples from Australia. Uh, funded through the National Congress and through the hum Human Rights Commission. Uh, so we don't have to take up every issue, uh, nor should we uh, waver from our commitment to protect and sustainably use our traditional territories, and that is the focus of our work here. Meanwhile, the Permanent Forum deals with a much broader mandate, and people travel there regularly to lobby governments for improved conditions for our peoples. Now, it seems fitting that uh, the strength of, uh, I know for me, Aboriginal women are the strength of Aboriginal people, and that our final speaker will be this lady here. So I will invite you to take the microphone. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners who are the Larrakia people. I wanted to take this opportunity to let, you know, be involved in this whole process of networking and communicating with countrymen from all over the world. I'm one of the Riverland elders from Catherine, Northern Territory, just three, uh, three hours from Darwin. And I just wanted to raise the point that what I would like to see and what the solution that I would like to see for 
the, for my people is a fair and just process. I don't know if you guys have been part of the Nailsma uh, discussions, but we talked a lot about water. And where I come from, we have vast amount of water throughout the whole year. Uh, spring waters, billabong, rivers, the lot. And throughout that process of uh, communicating and consulting, you know, the only way we can make changes, countrymen, if we all work together, if we all be a part of this process of change to address the processes and procedures in an indigenous way, in our way, for our people, that's right for us, that's right for our country. I understand we rely on government, but the only way we need to, we can go forward is by bringing that change and continue to fight for that justice. Continue to fight for our rights and continue to get that recognition which we are still fighting for. You know, we're so far behind. <clears throat> We need to bring that change and the only way we can make that happen if we address those bureaucratic, those statutory requirements that's there that dictates to us. We don't have a choice. Until I see that choice of freedom and justice so that we look at things 50-50 in regards to the water of my region, it was 80-20. Now, where's justice for us? We need to keep on fighting for our, you know, those rights that we are entitled to and not give up. Don't give up hope. We can change it. We can do it together. Let's stay positive and be focused. Don't think about the negative things because it's always going to be part of our lives. Let's just let it be dormant there. So through our people, throughout the world who represent us, thank you and I'm very proud that you were here and I'm had, I've had the opportunity to take part as a bush person from the bush, a nobody, but I know that with resilience we can do it, we can make it. Thank you. Now, I have the pleasure of making an announcement I don't usually make, and that is we have more time than I thought. <laughs> so I also want to apologise to this mob for making them stand up for so long, but please, take the floor. We have until four o'clock, I'm pleased to say. Thank you. Wandewa, Weber. The two groups um, that I speak the language now is here in this conference, Tangalo and Injimane people. And there you are, good morning, the Walangoranga Muruanigo. Sorry. Muruaning Larica and Goranga. Thank you, Larica people, Larica family, for welcoming us and allowing us to stand in your country. My name is Tutsi Daniel, and I am a elder, even though I look, maybe look younger, but I am an elder. <laughs> and that's, and that is the, that is what our old young people say today. You don't look old. And I said, I said, my, my darlings, I am an elder, and of course they respect that. And because that's what I am here. I'm here for the young people. And that is my story, and that, that is what I live for. I've always had a vision for our young people, our next generation. Our young people is our pride and our joy. They should be given the right. They should be given the freedom from any government organization or any government departments Though they may have criminal records, 
Our young people is their pride and joy. We are glad to, and honored to have our young people working on our land, on our country. They've been given that privilege. They've been given that right through the smoking ceremonies, through the dream time stories, by their grandfathers, by their grandmothers, by their great-grandfathers and great-grandmothers. They have been given the right to work, to be taught how to gash, be a good bush gatherers, bush hunters. When I was young, I was told to be a good bush gatherer. I was told to gather um, ngagongale. By my grandfather, I was told to go and collect bush onions. And, if, and I, I was tested. If, he, if I showed him and I only gathered a few bush onions, then I would, I would, he would tell me to go and get some more. And now I know why he was teaching me to be a good bush gatherer. So our young people that are working on land and sea and country, we, we want to be proud of them. We want to be with them as an elder. We want to uphold them and tell them, yes, you go forward. You show the people, you show the white people, you show the government situation, the people that once thought that you couldn't do this, but you can do it. And you know, it's, it's our pride and joy. We have to give them praise. Who else is going to give them a praise? The rocks and the mountains, and the country that they look after and care for? We have to be there our, as elders. We have to be with them every day, counseling them and showing them that we are there. We are, Nana and grandfather is always there for them. We are there every day, every week, every step of the way. Even when we wake up, when they're coming home from work, we have to be there for our young people. We have to show them and tell them. We have to be very proud of them. We have to be proud of our young people. And, and help them in all situations, no matter what. They are there working on land and sea and country for us. I'd like to see more young people. My vision, like I said, my vision has always been for young people. We have government departments in our communities, in our grassroots, grassroots communities. And I, I often will think to myself and say, why are these white people sitting as CEOs in our community? Where's their young people? Where's their young fellow workers? We don't want the white CEOs sitting in there and in our community. We want them to be out. We want to see our people coming on and filling in all those positions. That's not happening in our community, and it's sad. It's very sad. And our cry is for our young people to rise. Let them be strong like us. We want them to govern the land and govern the country, to govern, govern the land where once they were told of, you know, with lots of stories. They have lots of knowledge. They have lots of knowledge. And we want to, we want to see them being set free from prisons, from detentions. We want them to begin a new era, coming out of detentions and prisons, coming out and to working, be working on land and country. Why? Because I'll tell you why. Land, working on land, working on land will give them a freedom. Working on land will give them more joy because when they go talk to the old people and sit down with the old people and they want to learn more. I'll tell you why, working on country will heal them. It will heal them. They will begin to think and say, Yes, this is where I belong. That's where we all belong. That's what they're going to say. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, uh, the lady here with the white slacks on. Uh, will be our final speaker. Please take the microphone. And thank you for that very powerful message about our identity and our country. Thank you. Please. Um, hello, my name is Murray King. I'm from Southwest. 
um, Victoria, and I would like to say thank you to everyone. And um, I enjoyed coming here to listen to all your stories, and I'm definitely going to take that home and tell, share your stories with my people, and thank you so much. Hello. Uh, Excuse me. I want to... Can I just say? Please, I, I go ahead. I would encourage the young people. My name is Anthea Reed. I'm from Yarraba. Hey. I'm a Gorobana woman. Now, before I came here, I had trouble with child safety over in Queensland. My daughter is not allowed to come and visit me. She is not allowed to um, be out at night. She's got to stay home. She's on a curfew. This is in Queensland. I've heard about the stolen generation. It's happening right now, you know? And we need to encourage our young people to get out of the country. We need to get, out, get them out there and do those type of things. Because I've got to go back now and breach a four-week contract with child safety. And the, and the organisations that represent us there, they said my daughter wasn't even up on that list. Now, when I go back, I'm in breach of that contract. But I tell you what, I'm very glad I came here. Because I got strength from all you people here. And I'm glad for that, but I'm going to go back and fight them. they telling me my daughter cannot take her children. They went out to the police station to take my children. We only had half an hour. Half an hour. And by me being here, I'm in breach of that contract. I need support. I need help. We need to help our young people. We need to encourage them. We need to give them their life and their livelihood back. Thank you. We've had some very strong messages this afternoon, but unfortunately we've run out of time. I want to thank the people who helped us put together our regional consultations and patiently stood here on, st on stage, and uh, they've done a wonderful job. I think we've had a rich discussion. If the network can learn from the advice that you've given the network, it will create enduring relationships that will last through many generations. And I want to thank you all for your comments and encourage you to provide us with advice as we put the right structures in place to make this network a reality. So thank you so much, and thank you to all our presenters here on stage. Thank you. <laughs>